Hello everyone, it is Lakedra, and I pray that you are encouraged, that you are strengthened and uplifted in your faith. For the same Holy Spirit, the one who created the heavens and the earth, is the same one who is restoring marriages, bringing loved ones back, causing spouses to come out of darkness. Those that were away from the Lord, overturning divorces, softening hearts, removing separation and division. He is the same one that is healing you. He is the same one that is removing that affliction. All because of the blood of Jesus. So it doesn't matter what you are facing right now. Remember, he is greater than it all. So thank you all so much for coming on, joining with me as I bring to you another word of empowerment to uplift you and build you up and help you to stay in precious standards. For whatever you are going through right now, remember, God is greater than it all. So I want to jump right into the word for I know that it will be refreshing to you. You know, as Paul also tells us, these wonderful wonderful things in Romans chapter 15 when he wrote to the church in Romans he says now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost and this is so important that the Holy Spirit people of God help you to believe help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Paul is showing us that through the power of the Holy Ghost, may the Lord help you. May he help you to believe so that you will be filled with joy and peace and free from bondage and free from a life of hopelessness. This can only happen when we, Lord, when we people of God can walk by faith at all times and not by sight, in spite of all hell that's breaking loose in our lives and in spite of all the difficulties and challenges that we face in life. The only way we can still have this hope and faith and peace, this grace comes through the power of the Holy Spirit of being able to walk by faith and not by sight. In spite of all the hell that's breaking loose in your life right now. And all the difficulties and the challenges along with it. It is through the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul is showing us that may he help you to believe in spite of what you are seeing. So that you can be filled with joy and have peace. And people of God, you already know. There is nothing like having peace in the midst of troubles and Whatever you are going through right now, whatever you are facing in your marriage and many that are faced with divorce, the Holy Spirit is able to help you walk by faith and not by sight and have peace and joy in the midst of the troubles because he is the one that gives us that confidence. It is him that gives us the confidence to know that God hears and answers prayers. And when we have this confidence through the Holy Spirit that all is well and that God hears and answers prayers, it always brings peace of mind. And so through the power of the Holy Ghost, Paul is basically saying, may the Lord help you to believe. And you may be, you may be wondering, well, believe what? Believe whatever you are believing for, people of God. Whether it be to believe the word or believing for restoration, believing for healing, believing for salvation, believing for your marriage to be healed and restored and that spouse may be able to come back to God or to come back home. It doesn't matter. Paul is, is saying, may the Lord help you to believe. May he help you to believe so that you will be filled with joy and peace. Meaning, may he help you to take your eyes off of the circumstances, off of the troubles, the trials. This is what brings peace 
This is what brings joy. This is what gives hope. And this is why so many are burdened right now. This is why so many are ready to throw in the towel because they don't have the grace to walk by faith and not by sight. They don't have the power to believe. They don't have the strength to hope. Everything they see in the natural is moving them. And, and, and everything that is coming their way has brought discouragement. And so Paul, he gave such wonderful, precious words. May the Lord help you to believe so that you will have peace and joy through the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, this is why we hear John talk about this confidence. The Apostle John, I want us to go back and look at it. Remember, 1 John chapter 5, he talks about this confidence. In 14, verse 14 and 15, he says, and this is the confidence that we have. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And so the confidence come from being in him, being in God. The confidence which brings peace and joy and rest. And so how can someone know that God hears and will give them what they ask for? When everything in your life looks hopeless. It's through the power and the eye opening of the Holy Spirit. We see this so clearly in 1 Corinthians the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. I want us to take a look at it. We're here. Paul also is showing us in his writings. He says, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. Because you see right above that in verse 9, he says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined. What God has prepared for those who love him. He says, but it, it was to us. Meaning us who love God. Us the people of God. That God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit. His spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts. Except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. So we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. For no one can know these things that has been freely given unto them except through the knowledge that the Holy Spirit gives. Except through this knowing except through this faith, to believe that when they prayed, they are receiving what they've asked for. See, we, we can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Unless we, we know by the Spirit these things, we will become like what Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 8, verse 13. See, we'll believe only for a while. When things are going okay. But when things begin to, to start shaking up. And things begin to start looking. Like the very opposite of what God promised you. Or what you ask God for. The moment these things begin to happen. Without this knowing and this knowledge. Within you by the spirit of God. The one who helps us to believe. You'll fall away as soon as trouble comes your way. We'll fall away. As soon as temptations come, this is what Jesus tells us about in Luke chapter 8, verse 13, when he talks about the parable of the sea. He says it's like people whose hearts, where the seed has fell upon, 
Their hearts are like the ground that are rocky. Their hearts are like the rocky soil. It's because of the faith. It's what Jesus is talking about. I'm paraphrasing it. He's saying, you know, they can believe for a while, but then the moment troubles rise, they fall away. Because their roots, he said, is not deep. Meaning we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to believe in spite of what we are seeing. So he describes a person whose heart is like that, a, a person who's not strong in faith. He describes them as the rocky soil, where when the seed is, is sown there, it, it can only grow for a while, but then after a while, it dies because of the rocks in the way. Things that are there hindering the seed, stopping it from growing. And that's what, that's what happens with us. The moment we begin to see, you, you may see the divorce or you may have heard something negative or, or something terrible has happened. And the moment you see that, if you're not rooted and grounded, if the power of the Holy Spirit is not there to help you to stand, you'll fall away. You see, it is by his strength. It is by his knowledge and his knowing. It's by his knowing and his faith. We can endure all things. It is because of him we are able to walk by faith and not by sight. It is through him is what John the Apostle was showing us. This confidence we have in him. That whatsoever we pray for, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we will receive whatsoever we ask for. It's, it's when we pray Anything according to his word, we know that he hears us. See, this knowledge comes from the spirit. He shows us. He knows the mind of God. It's what the word shows us here in 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. The word is so powerful. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to know the wonderful things God has freely given us. He gives us this power where we can have confidence to walk by faith and not by sight. As James also tells us. When we pray, he tells us. James chapter 1 verses 6 and 7. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that, ra he that wavereth. Is like a wave of the sea. Driven with the wind and tossed. But let not that man think. That he shall receive anything of the Lord. It says, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And so we need the Holy Spirit to keep us rooted and grounded. We need the Holy Spirit to help us to believe. It is, it is his faith that causes us to, to believe in spite of what we are seeing. He removes the veil. He gives us this substance of faith. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. And the evidence of the things that are not seen, things that are hidden, things that not that has not yet come to pass. When the Holy Spirit gives us faith, we can still believe as though it already has happened. He gives us the eyes of God. He gives us this knowing what we know, what has happened and what is going on behind the scenes. He freely lets us, he lets us know freely. He lets us know what God has given unto us freely. The things we've asked for. Hallelujah. And so this is what Paul is telling us in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. He's saying, Let the, may the Lord help you to believe. So you will have joy and peace in the power of the Holy Ghost. So turn into the Holy Spirit unveils our eyes and remove the blindness from our minds. He stabilizes us. He helps us to know the truth. For it is the truth that sets us free and brings peace and rest. Hallelujah. You know, as in 1 Corinthians, the Bible tells us about the Holy Spirit giving us the gifts First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 and 11 through 11. I want to read it. It says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. 
For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. And I want to read on down. It says, and to another the, the working of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues but all these working that one and the self same spirit divide into every man severally as he will meaning he is the one alone who decides which gift each person each person should have he is the one who distributes the gifts he gives us the faith to believe we've received those things we've asked for. Thank God for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank God for Jesus. The one who can help us. The one who, who can help us to believe. In spite of what we are seeing and going through. He gives us the power to overcome this world. He gives us the power to bind and rebuke and resist the devil. He gives us the power to walk by faith and not by sight. He helps us to declare those things that be not as though they are. It is all given to us by the spirit of knowledge or a word of knowledge. He even helps us to understand the word and, and believe these things that we have not yet seen. He helps us to believe Jesus, the one our eyes have not yet seen. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us these revelations, knowledges of truth. So people of God, you have nothing to fear. He will be with you, Jesus said, until the ends of the earth. We are not alone in this fight. We are not alone in, in the battles. He is the same one who is restoring that marriage. He is the same one that is giving you wisdom on what to do. In that situation you are facing. He is the one to lead and guide us. And direct our path. As Jesus tells us. Remember again in Mark chapter 11. Verses 22 through 26. I want to go back to it. Jesus also talks about this faith. He says. Have faith in God. You see he's talking about. The faith of God. Not, not this faith. That we have in our minds. But the faith that is given to us in our hearts the faith to know the faith to see past the circumstances the lord is showing us he says that we we can say to the mountain be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said. This can only be done through the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, as Jesus says, you'll believe only for a while, he tells us. We'll believe only for a while until trouble rises up. Then we'll go back. Being double-minded. But James tells us, let not that man believe that he will receive anything. You see, it's, it's this power that we need. This power of refreshing, this power to help us to believe that when we prayed, we'll receive what we've asked for. Jesus is telling us with this kind of faith, nothing will be impossible. Nothing will be impossible for us. And so it is relying upon the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit, people of God, having that fellowship with him. Receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Turning to him. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what caused him to do the miracles he did. It was the Holy Spirit who caused it. He's the one that created everything we see. He's the one that imparted Christ in the womb of a virgin. Mary. My God, nothing is impossible. We have the Holy Spirit in our life. But then Jesus goes on and he tells us. He says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. He said, with this faith, 
with this faith, this faith of God when you pray. When, with this faith of God, X. With this faith of God, you will receive. Oh, hallelujah. And it takes us back to what John the Apostle said. See, it's this confidence we have. See, he was, they had the confidence to believe that what they prayed for, they will receive it because they had the faith of God that was given through the power of the Holy Ghost. And we are given this same precious faith, people of God. You and I that are in Christ Jesus. You and I that, that is seeking God for help. You and I that have been given this precious gift. Hallelujah. For the Bible tells us he is given to those that love him. He's given to those that are in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And he even brings those that are away from God to God. He draws us. He is the one that drew us to Jesus. To trust in him and believe in him. The one we have not seen. Well he's the same Holy Spirit that will help us to believe. To help us to believe that we've received the things we've asked God for even in spite of what we are seeing around us. In spite of, of, of the betrayal or in spite of what your spouse may have said to you or in spite of the photos you have seen or the divorce, it doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit is what will keep us in that perfect peace that passes all understanding. But then he goes on and Jesus says this, we cannot forget it. He says, and when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. See, the Holy Spirit helps us to forgive. He is the grace that we need in times of weaknesses. He is the one that imparts in us the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is love and joy and peace and gentleness and kindness and patience and self-control and faith, the Bible tells us, and goodness. It is through his power and might we are able to resist the devil in times of trouble. And you know, Paul the Apostle, John the Apostle, I want us to go back and look at how, how was he able? To receive from God. How was he able. To have. Whatever he asked for. The Bible tells us. If we look back at his writings. It was through obedience. It was through obeying God's word. And only the Holy Spirit can help us. And give us the power. To do the will of God. The Bible tells us in Philippians as well. Chapter 2 verse 13. That it is God who gives us the power. To do all the things that pleases him. And so John shows us as we look here, I'm going to read it. He's showing us that this is how God blessed him and gave him what he asked for because he, he was able to obey his word. It was through his faith in God. It was through him being in Christ Jesus, being filled with power. Let's look at it again in 1 John chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. I want to read it. He says, and, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment. He said that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And this goes back to what Jesus also tells us back in Mark chapter 11. Verse 24, when he, when he talks about us praying, you know, we can pray for anything. But then he says, down in verse 25 and 26, but first forgive so that your Father in heaven can forgive your sins too. And, and also we see what John is telling us. This is how we will receive what we ask for through loving one another. As he gave us commandment, all this comes through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the giver of love, the one who gives the fruit to love and obey God and do good, hallelujah, and pray and have faith to believe that we receive what we've asked for. 
My God, hallelujah. Then he says, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. Meaning those who, who keep God's commandments are those who are in him. They are true followers of Christ. They abide in him. His word is in them. But then he says, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abided in us by the spirit which he hath given us. He says, this is how we know Christ is in us, by the spirit that's at work in us, by the same spirit that was in Christ in us. This is how we know he's in us. Oh my God, hallelujah. And so whatever you are facing, people of God, it doesn't matter. For God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that's at work in us. Or according to the one that's at work in us, the Holy Spirit. The one who causes all things to be fulfilled in our lives. The one who gives us what we ask for. The one who helps us to pray for the Father knows what the Spirit is praying for. He hears his pleadings on our behalf when he intercedes for us. And so the Bible tells us that it's, it is by him. It is through him. And so whatever we are facing in life, we are not alone. The Holy Spirit is a guarantee that we will receive all that God has promised us. As Jesus even told Martha in John chapter 11, verse 40, he says, didn't I tell you? That you will see the glory of God if you believe. Remember when Lazarus had died. And his sister Martha. Was hurting. And, and she was seeking God. Her and her sister Mary. They was looking for the Lord. Wondering where he was. And they said Lord if you had been here. My brother Lazarus would not have died. And so. The Lord had to talk to Martha. He said Martha did not tell you. That you will see the glory of God. If you believe. And so the only way we can believe. In things that are. That looks impossible. Is through the Holy Spirit. Helps. Who helps us. And, and causes us to believe for our lives. You know. A lot of times. A lot of times. We as well. We can. We can believe for others. But. But it's so hard for us to believe for ourselves. Where the Holy Spirit is able to help you to believe. And we know that also faith comes by hearing. And by hearing by the word of God. He is the one that helps us to hear the word of God. He is the one to bring revelation. To believe in the word of God. That God is able to do it for us. And so where the spirit. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is. The Bible tells us there is liberty. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. And it tells us that the Lord is the spirit so it is jesus it is jesus who is in us hallelujah that has poured out his spirit upon us and when we have this faith there will be rest we can cease from our work we can cease from all our works and the mechanics when we have the holy spirit in our life because he does it all for us he does all the work for us the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. For only we who believe can enter his rest. And so this rest comes as a result of us having faith in God. When we know all is well. Still believe and know that they already are. And begin to declare them. When you find that you are declaring God's word out of your mouth. Because you know you believe that it is true. Jesus said you are have. Whatsoever you say it. And so people of God. I'm telling you. We need the Holy Spirit. In order to continue the journey. We need the Holy Spirit. To help us to trust in God. Until the end. And to walk by faith. And not by sight. We want to believe God. Even when we cannot see. We want to trust and know. That it is already so. Hallelujah, before it becomes so. Oh, hallelujah, before it is so. Before we see it, we want to believe that it is so. 
Jesus said you will have it when you believe you receive it. Meaning when you believe it is done. When you know in your heart. When you know that you know that you know that it is done. It will be yours. As the scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 31. A man shall leave father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall be one flesh. People of God, you want to believe this no matter what, even if there has been a divorce. You want to believe this even if there has been a remarriage. You want to believe this even if you have not seen your spouse. There is no contact. You want to know that you know that it is yours. And this comes by relying upon the Holy Spirit, looking to him, the author. Of faith, the one who helped Jesus to believe, the one who helped Jesus to go about doing good, healing all that was sick and oppressed by the devil, the one who raised him back from the dead, the one who helped him lay down his life for us and take it back up again. You know, as Jesus also told the man whose son was possessed by a devil in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, that with God, he told him, all things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible to them that believe. Nothing will be impossible. So as you keep hearing the word of God, allowing the word to renew your mind, the Holy Spirit is able to be at work inside of us. He's able to reveal truth and impart faith. He's able to bring that word that you've been standing on to pass into physical manifestations. There are coming more and more breakthroughs. Many as well are seeing things take place in their lives. There are breakthroughs, people of God. I'm telling you already, yours. In spite of what we see, in spite of what we have heard, Jesus is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent what God has spoken in his word. It is so. So we just thank God for miracles. We thank God. We thank God for his goodness and his mercy. We thank God for his healing power. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, that it is so. Thank you, Lord God, for helping us to believe and receive everything we've asked you for. Lord God, and for everyone that is right now needing your touch and your grace. Oh God, touch, heal, feel, oh God, empower in the name of Jesus. For we bind the works of the devil. We come against it now, Lord God. For we know that you are greater than it all. Thank you, Lord God. We declare divorces are being overturned. Lord God, thank you that whatever has come, whatever has come, oh God, even with separation, oh God, we thank you that nothing is too hard for you. We declare and decree spouses are returning home. Lord God, we thank you. Restoration is in our lives. For you, Lord God, that created the heavens and the earth is the same one restoring marriages. We praise you in advance. Thank you, Lord God, for turning and softening hearts, turning hearts back to you, removing stony, stubborn hearts, oh God. Thank you that you are bringing forth faith to help us all believe your word and to walk by faith and not by sight. We give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us in the earth by your spirit. We give you the praise in advance. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for breakthroughs. We trust in you, God. Thank you for salvation and deliverance. Thank you for your healing power and breakthroughs. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing reconciliations. Reconciliations, oh God, in marriages. Causing them to be transformed. We call it done in the matchless name of Jesus. And all the people of God that are joined with me now. We all say amen, amen, and amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, the precious standards. Look forward, I will also be bringing more testimonies as well to you all. And so be looking for that. Remember, God loves you, and I love you too. 
And until next time, bye-bye.